Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome back to Top 5 Wednesday. This is my second Top 5 Wednesday of 2018, but January is already over and February is fast on the way. So I absolutely loved the topic for today's Top 5 Wednesday and that is hidden gems in your favourite genre. Now I had to think about this one, what is my favourite genre? Because I have so many genres that I just like to choose from. But I narrowed it down to ones that have at least a historical element to them. These are also books that, not that, that they don't have very many reviews, but I don't know very many other people who have read them that I can talk to and gush about because I absolutely adore these books. Number one is definitely going to be Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Cow. I absolutely adored this book. An alternate World War One where psychics are actually real, although they're not trying to release it to the general public. So they're working in the army in World War One and they basically are retrieving information from dead men who are basically coming back from the front with information on what's happening on the front lines and that's how the army is getting intelligence in a way. They still have spies but this is a even more reliable network and the main psychic Ginger is actually on the front with her fiance and she goes through many personal and um, professional difficulties um, dealing with this. Not only is it women working and how they're being treated but it's also having this kind of gift and having this ability but needing to hide it and women's place in war I think is a very interesting topic but it also has that fantastical element which is really really well done and it's really well plotted so if anyone else could read this book and discuss it with me down below that would be wonderful because I just need to share the love. Next we have a crime book that I read with the lovely Kate Howe last year in 2017 and that is An Only to Deceive by Tasha Alexander. This is a Lady Emily mystery and I utterly 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 adored this book. Lady Emily is newly widowed and she is quite a clever woman but she never really found passion or love with her husband and that is until she starts looking more into his life um, when he was still alive and she realized that he loved her quite dearly and she always just passed him off and so she kind of has this guilt about their relationship and um, she also wants to find out what truly happened with him because his death was quite suspicious. He died in Africa during a hunting trip and um, many things happened that don't quite make sense. So it is a very, very interesting book. But the fact that one, she is new, newly widowed, so it gives her a lot more agency within a Victorian society. Um, two, she is quite clever and she definitely has the resources and the money to pursue that intelligence. Not many women were given the opportunity to become educated, but Lady Emily definitely pursues it and I'm currently finishing off the second book. I have read it with Kate Howe again and it is just as good as the first. So this one is utterly wonderful. I don't know many other people who have read this crime book. I think it's not hugely popular in Australia. Australia loves their thriller and more contemporary crimes. So if you have read this one and you just want to gush about it with me, please, please do so below because I absolutely adore this book. Next is absolutely no surprise, I'm sure, but that is The Wild Air by Rebecca Muscle. This is set in before and after World War I, but it basically follows Stella Dobbs as she discovers a true passion in her life, and that is of flying. She wants to become an aviatrix or a pilot as we know them today, and she absolutely adores flight, and it is her determined passion to do the thing that she truly loves and it becomes absolutely inspirational mainly because she is from a more middle class family unlike Lady Emily who is wealthy has the money to follow her passions Della and her family she's middle class they don't really have all those connections and everything but she manages to find a way and going through World War One and all the huge developments that happened with the planes during that time um, it is absolutely, absolutely fascinating and the love story in this one, um, like I've said before, Rebecca Muscle has utterly renewed the name of Dudley for me. I think he was killed in the Harry Potter series, but Dudley in this book, he is absolutely beautiful and 
I would love to know if anyone else has read this book and what they thought of it. It is a slow read, but it's one of those slow magical reads. Next is a YA book actually, and that is none other than Lady Helen and the Dark Days Club. This is set during the Regency period and has a very interesting fantastical element where Lady Helen is actually drawn into more of a monster dark thing killing society. And she basically is, in this book she is in denial about it. She doesn't understand what is going on and that is one of the amazing things I love about this book. It actually has a character who is unsure of this society and she's unsure if she wants to enter this realm that's been opened up to her. It's not something she jumps into because it is the unknown and it is scary. The unknown can be scary. Um, and so I really thoroughly enjoy that. But, you know, she might be scared of it but she does she doesn't lack in gumption, that's for sure. Lady Helen is really fascinating and I have actually met the author and we had a really good discussion about where we truly think the Regency period started and ended. I agree with Alison Goodman that definitely this is set in the true Regency. Lastly, number five for my top five Wednesday, absolute beautiful hidden gems of the historical fiction genre. And that will be Chris Cleave's Everyone Brave is Forgiven. Um, this one, unlike the others that have a little bit of romance, have some fantasy elements or uh, more of a personal struggle, this one is very interesting. It is more of the author's personal history. He found some letters that his grandfather had written to his grandmother and that basically gave him the spark of this book and to see where these people, just everyday regular people and how they were able to do the war work you know many people have considered the heroes and amazing but these are regular people who have someone that they love who they're writing to and they're just going through each day as it comes and some of them go through post-traumatic stress some of them can't cope with different things there's they form addictions they try to hide they try to run away and there's almost this idea in English mentality where it's just like keep calm and carry on where many of the people who almost couldn't keep calm were considered cowards because of it and he very much removes that stigma and he says that just because you're doing something brave doesn't mean you always have to be brave you can have a point of weakness and you can share and express those weaknesses with people who you feel safe with and I thought it was a beautiful book and I haven't heard too much on it so I definitely recommend this one it's a little bit heavier than the other one but it is very very well written and I just loved the themes and ideas that Chris Cleave managed to portray in this book. Alright, so that is my top five Wednesday, the last one for January of 2018. I will see you very much in February. I'll be doing Cozyathon starting tomorrow, so let me know what you think of any of these books, or if you have read them, please, please, please tell me your thoughts down below, because I need to talk about them with someone. So tell me what is an absolute favourite hidden gem from a genre that you love because I love finding books that n not many people know about and it's just something that's so personally connected to you. They are truly wonderful reads. So I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day and happy reading. Bye!